Good morning, Bay Area. It's Jocelyn here coming at you from my living room. I hope that you yourself are somewhere cozy and comfortable, that you've got a hot cup of coffee or tea with you, and that you're ready to engage with us in prayer and in worship and in digging into God's word this morning, because we have a great gathering coming up in just a few moments. But before we begin, a few things that we thought uh, you might like to know. If you are experiencing any type of hardship in this season, which so many of us are, we don't want you to walk through that alone. We are a church family and we simply wanna help, so don't be worried about reaching out. That's what we're here for. Secondarily, if you are a family, if you've got kiddos at home, we've got some awesome stuff for you from Sunday worship to Bible stories and activities that you can be doing together at home. So make sure you check those out online. And lastly, if you are new or checking Bay Area out for the first time, we would love for you to hang out after the gathering for Virtual Guest Central. We just want you to hop on a Zoom call with our team and they can answer any questions that you might have. So the gathering is getting ready to begin. Settle in. It's going to be a good Sunday. Good morning, Bay Area. We're so excited to be gathering together this morning. Excited that you've tuned in to worship with us. Before we get started, I'd love to read a verse for you. This is Psalm chapter 18, verses one and two, and it says, I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. And so this morning, as we get ready to worship together, I know that we're scattered, that, that we're not able to meet in a physical building together. But I just wanna remind us all that that God is not stopped by a virus. He is not shaken by the fact that we can't meet together in the same room. He is still the same God that he was yesterday, today, and he will always be. He is our stronghold and our fortress. And so this morning, I just wanna encourage you wherever you're at, in your living room, in your bedroom, in your dining room, let's stand together. And let's sing praises to our stronghold, Jesus, this morning.
sing, Behold the Lamb. Good morning. My name is Jeff Supp, and I serve as Executive Pastor of Operations. And during this challenging time that we're in, I just wanted to talk to you heart to heart for a moment. We know that so many people in our world and in our community are struggling financially right now. And as a church family, it's our heart desire just to, to help. And so if you find yourself in a difficult financial position right now, please know that we care about you that we wanna walk alongside you and help you in any way that we can. And so I wanna encourage you to reach out through our website, it's confidential, and let us know how we might be able to help you through our benevolent ministry right now. Now this is a part of what church family is about, is that we help one another along the way. And for those of you that, by God's grace, have not been as impacted financially during this time, and you've been able to continue to give. We just want to thank you. You've been such a blessing uh, to so many people. And this morning, I also wanted to give you an update on our two-year vision that we call Unrivaled. You may recall that when we first launched that, there were some key ministry areas involved that we wanted to emphasize. Reaching people for Jesus, discipling children and students, and resourcing kingdom impact around the world. And I just want to encourage this morning that God has done amazing things over this past 22 months. And let me just mention a few things to you. We just heard recently from Pastor Stephen in South Sudan that the orphanage that we funded in December was completed and soon 12 children will move in and call that home. Over the last year, we've reached more students across our three campuses than ever before. And we know that People are coming to faith and growing in their relationship with Jesus through the regular ministries of all three campuses and through the work of our global partners around the world. And so God really is doing amazing things. As I said, we are 22 months in, and when we first launched the Unrivaled initiative, God gave us a big faith goal of $16.5 million. And so far, the church family uh, we've given over $13.6 million, which is incredible, and we thank you so much for that. I just want to invite you in these remaining two months as we approach the end of June when this initiative completes, if you could get some time with God between now and then and ask him how he would have you to be a part of helping us to finish this really strong as you're able, as he provides for you to do so. And I want you to know that Robin and I, my wife Robin, uh, and I are so thankful to be a part of a church family that has a heart to reach people for Jesus from here to the nations and has a heart that gives as generously as you do. And so thank you for all that you're doing. Would you pray with me? Lord God, we do bring before you the people in our community, the people in our church family that are struggling right now because of uh, everything that's happening and all the pressure around finances, Lord. And we pray that you'd meet their needs and that as uh, we can, that you'd bring them to us. You'd invite them and, and, and encourage them, Lord, 
to seek help so that we can walk alongside them during this time, just as you've designed the church to do. Lord, we pray for our partners around the world as the whole world is being affected by this, that, uh, that you help all of us, all the churches, to minister, to, to continue to extend the name of Jesus and his gospel, to reach people, to love people in our community, Lord. God, that you would uh, help Bay Area Community Church to be a light in our community for the name of Jesus during this time. So God, for each one, I pray your blessing on. We pray for our unrivaled initiative that you'd help us, Lord, to finish strong what you began uh, through us two years ago now. And uh, Lord, we commit all of this to you in the rest of our morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, Bay Area. My name is Jake Wiedewald. I'm the interim campus coordinator and student ministry pastor at the Easton campus. And I'm joining my lovely wife, Sarah. And we want to pray. We want to take some time and continue worshiping with some intercessory prayer. And the word intercession means to come between. And so intercessory prayer is going before the Lord on behalf of others. And so we want to do that. We want to pause and do that. If you know anybody's name who needs prayer, if you know them by name, we want you to use their name and pray for them. We want you to be praying out loud as a family. Grab your family together uh, and pray. Pray out loud. We're going to have moments here of, of pause and silence to where you're able to pray. Before we dig into our intercessory prayer, I want to share with you from 1 Timothy 2, verse 1. It says, First of all, then I urge you, I urge that supplication, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people. And that's what we want to do right now. We want to stop, we want to pause, and pray on behalf of others. And so, let's do that. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for who you are, for your love for us, your grace for us, and just your character, Lord, that you love us so much. And as we begin to pray on others' behalf, as we begin to intercede for others, we want to think about those medical professionals that are going out of their way and into harm's way, Lord, to protect and, and help heal those uh, who are sick. Father, we want to pause and pray for those that are sick and those that are suffering. Father, we know that you are the ultimate healer, and so right now, God, we ask that you would break in and you would provide healing for those people. for those suffering from economic hardships who are furloughed or have lost their jobs, Lord, who are economically strained by COVID-19. who are suffering from anxiety in these times, God. We pray that you would provide your supernatural peace for them. Pray for the, the folks who are at risk, 
more susceptible um, to getting sick. Lord, that you would protect them from harm, that you would protect them and, 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 and certainly heal them from the things that they're already susceptible to, whether it's a heart condition or uh, they're diabetic, Lord, that you, you can also enter into those areas. who are experiencing change in this time, changes in their homes, changes in their jobs, changes in their health, in their finances, and their security. We lift up those people to you today, God, and we know that you are a firm foundation and you are unchanging. thank you for who you are and what you're doing through us individually, through our homes, through our church, Bay Area, through each individual campus, Lord. And we pray, and we, we pause this morning to, to just think about others, to pray for others, to intercede on their behalf, Lord. And we thank you for that opportunity, that we have the ability to do that, that we have a God so powerful that is listening to us who is sovereign over all. And so, Lord, we just thank you. And we ask that you would continue to grow us and to challenge us and to push us. And we ask all this in your name. Amen. This is the four back right now and predators and the walls are strong and mighty so no bad guys, but no bad guys birds can come in. Good morning, Bay Area. I am so thrilled to have you again in our house. I have been missing you a lot, and I know that you've been missing our gathering, so I hope this is really gonna speak to you this morning. What you just saw was a little video from my grandson, Billy. Pops had a request. I said, Billy, help me with the sermon today. Would you go out and build a fortress for Pops? And that's what he built. And I'll tell you why, because today it's all about the fortress. Now, a fortress is a military stronghold. It's a place of defense and strength and a refuge for us. We don't talk a lot about fortresses these days, but back in the ancient days, a fortress was everything. For example, a famous fortress in the time of Jesus was Masada. Masada is actually the Hebrew word for fortress, and this crazy paranoid king named King Herod the Great built this fortress in order to protect himself from any possible revolt. Well, a little bit closer to home now, we have a fortress in our very own Baltimore, Fort McHenry. And you probably know the story. Why, as a matter of fact, I bet many children have taken a field trip to Fort McHenry. It was built in the late 1700s and it defended the Port of Baltimore. Of course, the most famous story is uh, the War of 1812. And the Brits were bombarding Fort McHenry for some 25 hours. And early in the morning, a man named Francis Scott Key he woke and he saw that flag still flying over Fort McHenry and he wrote what would become our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. Well, the Bible is all about fortresses. It actually uses it as an image or metaphor for God. God is our fortress. Psalm 62 says, He is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, I will not be shaken. And perhaps the greatest psalm that reflects God being a fortress is Psalm 46. Let me tell you a quick story about it. Martin Luther, the year 1527. A black plague 
has come through Germany. And Luther is contemplating, do I leave Wittenberg with my family to get away from the Black Plague or do I stay? He's reading Psalm 46. And based on that Psalm, he decides to stay and to keep ministering to his people. And he writes one of the greatest hymns of all time. A mighty fortress is our God. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Psalm 46 is an incredible psalm. And I want to remind you that the psalms were meant to be sung and so in Psalm 46, you actually have a refrain or a chorus here. It's found in verse 7 and verse 11. I want us to first look at this chorus. It reads like this. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. In this verse, there is used the two most common names of God the name Lord, Jehovah, and the name God, Elohim. He is our Jehovah, our self-existent one, the self-sufficient one, the one who is above time, who has no needs, who always was, always is, always will be. And it says that he is the Lord of hosts. In other words, he is the Lord of armies. And in mind here, is the armies of heaven. Our Lord has legions and hosts of angels at his disposal. They are at his every beck and call. He is our commander in chief. In other words, he's of the highest rank. There's no one higher than him. He reports to nobody. Everybody reports to him. And it says that this Lord of hosts is with us. He is a present God. And then it says, the God of Jacob is our fortress. In other words, he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the God of his people. He is the God of us. And he is our fortress, our mighty stronghold, our strong defense. He is an impenetrable unsurmountable fortress. And here's the beautiful thing. When you and I trust in Jesus Christ, we are placed inside the fortress of God. Absolutely safe, absolutely secure. We need not be afraid. Now, earlier this week, I was taking a walk Mary Kay and I live in Eastport, so I was just walking beautiful Eastport. And as I was walking and actually thinking about this message, um, all of a sudden somebody called out to me and he said, hey, Pastor Greg. And I looked and lo and behold, somebody who attends our church, I had met him once or twice. And he said, I'm in a valley, referring to last week's message. And he started to share with me how he's lost his job because of the pandemic 
how he, he's in need of medication and how he's in constant pain and he suffers from anxiety. When I asked him anxiety over what, he said just about everything, but especially anxiety over the fear of death. And I told him, Psalm 46 is for you. Because Psalm 46, it says that the Lord of hosts is with you right now. And that the God of Jacob, he is an immovable, unsurmountable fortress. I don't know what you might be going through now, but I have good news for you. The Lord is right now, present tense. He is with you and he is your fortress. I want us now to look at verse one. It's not uncommon in the Psalms for the very first verse of the Psalm to be like an umbrella over the entire Psalm. And this reads, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I want to ask you to read that out loud with me. Let's all read it together from our own living room or kitchen. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Look at this. God is something, not was, not will be, but right here, right now. He is our refuge. In other words, God is our place of shelter. It's very similar to fortress. A fortress is always a place of refuge. A refuge is a place we run to to get out of the storm, to feel protected, to feel safe and secure. It goes on to say that he is our strength. And here it's referring to inner strength. It's when you and I are so exhausted, we've so had enough, we don't think we can keep going on, and yet we have an inner strength, a confidence, a conviction that God gives us in the midst of anything that might come our way. And then it says this, a very present help. Now I love the way this is written because he could have said a help, or he could have said, a present help, but he says a very present help, an exceedingly present help, an extremely present help. That's the idea. God is right here, right now. He's sitting on ready. You know, with God, there is absolutely no social distancing. He's not six feet away. He is right here, present and ready to help us. And then it says, a help in trouble. Now, I have found that many followers of Jesus somehow have this mindset that we are immune from trouble. That if we do everything right, if we seek to please and honor God, that somehow we're exempt. Well, I want you to know that trouble is not an elective in the school of life. It is a prerequisite. All of us are gonna go through trouble. God never promises his children immunity from trouble. What he promises is that he's a very present help. He is our anchor, he is our support, he is there ready to help us in the midst of trouble. And when we know that God is with us in the trouble, we're not afraid. That's what this text says. It says, therefore we will not fear. You see, we become afraid when our well-being is threatened. But when we know we have a fortress, we have a refuge named Jesus Christ, our well-being is never ever threatened. And so we don't need to be afraid. One of my most favorite stories to tell, and I've told this before, it's when Mary Kay and I were global missionaries living in Warsaw, Poland, and I had taken Mary Kay out on a date. It was a Friday night. We came back home, and when we came back home, we saw three sets of little kids' eyeballs 
looking out the window. And we knew something was up because it was about 10 p.m. They should have been in bed. The babysitter should have had them already asleep. And when we came in, we found out that David had had an accident. He cut his head. He, he jumped on the couch and caught the corner of the couch. And he was bleeding everywhere. His hair was all matted with blood. And so I put David in our old Volkswagen Beetle. I threw him in the back seat. We drove to downtown Warsaw. Now, this is a pretty scary place. It's late at night. It's gray. There's high-rise buildings. It's, it just wasn't that encouraging of a place. I remember parking and getting out of the car, walking towards the hospital. All of a sudden, David stopped. And I was holding his hand. He stops. And so I turn around and I, I got down on my knees to look at him. David's like three and a half, almost four years old. I looked at him eye to eye and I could tell he was absolutely afraid. And he said this, Daddy, will you be with me? And I said to him, David, your daddy is going to be there the entire time holding your hand. You could just see the stress, the fear, just evaporate, leave David. Now, when I think about that, if a human earthly father could provide such comfort, how much more our God, who is our fortress, who is our refuge, who is our strength, who is a very present help in trouble, how much more secure are we? Psalm 46 is really about God being present with us and God being our protector, no matter what, no matter what. And that's what the psalmist is trying to show us. Verses two and following. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. No matter the calamities that might come our way, earthquake, uh, tsunami, hurricane, no matter what might come, God is our fortress. He's our refuge and strength. He goes on now in verses four and following, and the context here is that Jerusalem was under siege, and yet God rose up and thwarted the enemies and in verse four, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. Here is God, the Most High God. He inhabits the city of Jerusalem. And it says, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. In contrast to the earth giving way and the mountains being moved into the heart of the sea, this says that God is with his people. God will not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. There is no one like our God. A mighty fortress is our God. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Did you know there is no panic in heaven? That God is absolutely on his throne. And the only thing that will happen are his plans, his purposes, his providence is always at work. And one day, God is going to make all of the injustice right. And he is going to come back. The person of Jesus will return. And this alludes to it in verse 8 and 9. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Jesus Christ is coming back. And he's going to make all the wrongs right and he is going to reign 
forever and ever. He's on his throne. He's in control. He's a mighty fortress. This psalm tells us so much about who God is. He's our fortress, he's a refuge, he's our strength, he's the Lord of hosts, he's God Almighty. And yet, for some of us, sometimes just knowing about God is not enough. Uh, what I need often is for someone to give me an admonition or to give me an exhortation or even a rebuke and that's actually what happens here now in verse 10. Because in verse 10, God himself speaks. Up to this point, the psalmist has been talking about who God is. Now God breaks in and God is speaking and this is what he says. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted on the earth. Be still. This is exactly what God is saying to us now. I mean, so many of us are uptight, we're anxious, we're feeling lonely, we're worried about the future, we're concerned about our finances, we're, we're reacting and worried about our health. And God says, be still. And when he says, be still, it's the idea of cease striving or to relax. Or it could be more like this, stop it, stop it. Stop striving, stop worrying, stop being anxious. And actually this word has the idea of drop your hands. You see, uh, when we hold our hands up, we hold our hands up to fight or to protect ourselves, or we hold our hands up because we want control of something, we're going to grab hold of something, or we want to push something away. And God is saying, don't do that. Stop doing that. Be still. Relax. Cease striving and know something. And not just up here, but to know it in our heart. Know that I am God. That I am on my throne. That I'm absolutely in control. That I'm working out all of my plans and all of my purposes, and I will be exalted amongst the nations. I will be exalted on the earth. And so therefore, we can sing this chorus. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. He's a fortress. He's a mighty fortress. He's our refuge and our strength. He's the Lord of hosts, the Lord of, of the armies of heaven, and we can trust him. The message that God has for us is to be still. I'm your fortress. I'm your fortress. Several generations ago, there was a woman named Anne Steele, and Anne had an incredibly difficult life. She lost her mom when she was only three years old. She had an accident as a child that left her as an invalid. Her fiance drowned when she was 20 years old, just before their wedding. And she had uh, serious health issues. And yet she found her comfort in God's word. And in particular, she found that God was her refuge and her fortress. And reading Psalm 46, she wrote an incredible hymn. Dear refuge of my weary soul, God is indeed our refuge when we cease striving and know that he's God. And I've asked Jonathan if he would sing this hymn for us. Dear refuge of my weary soul. And as he sings it now, I want you to quiet your heart, to be still, and to know you have a fortress, the fortress who is with you, Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus Christ. He's here right now. Dear refuge of my weary soul, on the 